It's still 11. I did it. You said we're starting at 11. We're starting at 11. Hello. Let me make sure that you can hear me. Yes, it looks like the meter is going up and down. So chances are you can hear me. Hi. Happy Friday. Uh, looks like we got some folks here already. That's cool. Hello. Hello, Travis. Demon Dreamer. Hello. How you doing? Nice to see you. Regulars are good. I like regulars. So, we're doing this again. I know, they said it couldn't be done, and by they, I mean nobody. Nobody said this couldn't be done. This isn't actually all that hard. Hi! <laughs> I didn't sleep well last night, so this is going to be a fun one. I realize I should probably, like, if we're going to do this on the regular and, and get new people, I should probably have some kind of formal intro, and maybe I should just make a video or something that, that plays. Cool. You can hear me. Awesome. Thank you. Um, so if you don't know me, uh, my name is Kevin Blades. I uh, am an amateur puppeteer and a professional puppet builder. And by that, I mean, I get paid to do one and not the other. Um, that, that's pretty much, I think, the only definition. Although, you know, I know that in the States, for example, like professional puppeteers have to belong to the Screen Actors Guild and all that kind of stuff. But I don't know what it is here in Canada. I have no idea. But mostly my job every day is building professional Muppet style hand puppets. That's what I do. Um, Barry Sommerfeld, hello! Or Field, forgive me if I mispronounce any names. You know, I'm reading fast and also tired. So, you know, that's how it goes. Um, we're gonna get at it real quick today because we didn't get to a question I wanted to get to last time. So we're gonna start off with that. However, um, I didn't actually finish that intro. So what we do here is um, I do some puppet building demonstrations and take uh, questions from the viewers. And I also have some questions I have solicited ahead of time that we're going to be doing practical puppet building demonstrations. And over the course of this, we're kind of going to be building a whole puppet from scratch uh, and literally from scratch, like designing the pattern. So if you haven't watched the other streams, uh, they're all archived on the YouTube channel, which the thing will come up, the lower third will come up here eventually with all the links and everything. Um, you can go back and watch those. This is, everyone's gonna kind of build off the others. So it's worth going back and, and watching the other things. We are gonna repeat ourselves a lot um, because of that, because there's always new people coming in. And uh, so we may get a lot of the same questions and a lot of the points are going to be the same. So, you know, that's just how it goes. Um, but check this out. Look at this. I'm, I'm getting real, going real hard on the professionalism stuff. Check this out. Look, we have an agenda now for every video. I'm doing custom titles on the thumbnails. So now, of course, when you go and look at the archive, you can see what each stream is about. This is projective, of course, because we're doing live audiences. I uh, don't know why I'm not seeing your video, just audio on Twitch. I see you on YouTube though. Refresh, it doesn't seem to work. Hmm, hang on, let me check. Let me verify. What is the Oracle's favorite Dark Crystal character? Hmm, well, good question. One second, let me, let me get to that in a second. Let me make sure that the video is going through on Twitch. Oh, I think you may be right. But you are you are hearing the audio? That's very odd. I don't know what's going on there. May have to restart. Which wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing because I forgot to hit the record button. <laughs> um All right, let me try. Let me try this. I'm going to turn off Twitch here. Turn it back on. Hopefully it'll reconnect. I don't want to really interrupt the stream for the archive. So sorry, technical stuff. Streaming always this always happens. Like this even happens to professionals, which ain't me. Um, live and then it went offline. I don't know what's happening with Twitch. Um Golly. It seems to be authenticating and then not authenticating. I'm afraid we're going to have to let that go. And this time we're not going to be broadcasting on Twitch. I'll sort that out for next time. Hopefully anybody on Twitch uh, is going to come over to YouTube. I'm very sorry about that. I have no idea what's going on. I think it's 
it might be on restream's end this is the this is the problem with uh doing the whole restream thing thank you demon dreamer i apologize for that um no idea what's going on there uh okay so we've got an agenda we'll get to the dark i don't actually know the answer to the <laughs> question so <laughs> i'll think about it while we're talking about this um so this is what we're doing today we're doing the intro right now of course then we're going to get right to the question that i wanted to get to last stream that we didn't have time for which is about uh, aligning uh features on a puppet and doing symmetry then we're going to get to the main practical demonstration which is Hello, Richard. How you doing? Nice to see you. Good username, Zayfud Beeble Brox. Um, we're going to be taking the skin off of this head that we have been working on and designing. Twitch always seems to be twitchy. Yeah, well, you know, that's why they named it that. Uh, we're taking the skin off of that and putting it on this one, which is our slight modification that we did last stream. That may or may not work. Sometimes that doesn't work. I'm going to demonstrate how you can reactivate glue with a hairdryer and uh, hopefully reuse the skin, but we'll just see. So that's why the hopefully in this point here is hopefully we'll be gluing the skin onto the other skull. Uh, and then we'll just chat and have your questions if there's time at the end. So there we go. Ah, <sighs> boy, I don't like the whole... T I'm going to try clicking this button one more time and see if we can get Twitch going. I don't know, Twitch, what are you doing? What are you doing? You're not being helpful. Oh, well. I'm not gonna locally, I guess I'm not gonna locally record. It's too late to start now. There is Demon Dreamer over on YouTube. I'm trying, I'm trying to get, I don't know, maybe Twitch is having a problem. With it. Sending data to Twitch. Says it's online. I'm gonna look one more time. I, I don't like problems. This is why I need a producer. This is why I need Frankie. I need a producer. Can I do ventriloquism? I cannot. Nope, I am not a ventriloquist at all. Um, that is a whole different skill set. Nope, Twitch is still, Twitch is still borked. Uh, sorry about that. You know what? I'm just gonna turn off the Twitch thing for now. Oh, what's my opinion on Etsy raising their fees? We can we can get to that here. Let me get rid of the agenda here. Um, I love that transition. Anyway, yeah, Etsy's doing a thing. Etsy's raising their fees yet again. They're going from 5% to 6.5%, which doesn't seem like much, but when your margins are super thin, that's a lot. And that's not the only fees Etsy takes. This is what, there's a whole, we, there's a whole thing. Um, the dirty secret of how Etsy operates is when they take a percentage, um, what I like free lessons, I'm not, thank you, <laughs> first of all, but not really, um, really just because I don't have time. There's, there's a whole, like, I don't, when I perform puppetry, I perform it uh, amateurly, you know, just for fun. So uh, that would be something I would absolutely take you up on if I was interested in getting into it professionally. But I got I got a job and it's building puppets. Um, but thank you. So um, Etsy, yeah. So how Etsy works, among other fees, there's a fee for everything. Like literally there's a fee every time somebody clicks a button and buys something that is like multiple layers deep. And there's, a, there's fees on fees and there's like, it's a whole thing. But um, they take their percentage off of the total cost, including shipping. But I still have to pay that amount of shipping. So if somebody chooses a higher tier of shipping or shipping that's more expensive, SD takes a bigger cut, but I don't get that doesn't trickle down, right? That just means that I get less money in my pocket. Um, and that's the part that really irks me. And so that means they're taking a bigger cut out of that now. And that's not, it's not, it's not odd. It's not good. Uh, thank you, Jamie. Hello. Yes, the Lizard. I just finished that yesterday, I think. That's what I'm like to, now I'm putting like, whatever my most recent build is, just gets sitting next to Kermit. And it's like they're being, you know, they're being sanctified and blessed on their way out the door <laughs> by by the door guardian Kermit. Um, yeah, we could we could have a closer look at that in a sec. Um, but like I said, um, I'm still thinking about the Dark Crystal question. You know, my personal favorite Dark Crystal character has got to be the Chamberlain. I mean, like 
not only you know a Frank Oz performance, but then um, I've forgotten the name Warwick something of the performer who did the uh, the Oracle in or not the Oracle <laughs> the Chamberlain in um, the the Netflix show. Ah, uh, he's a famous British puppeteer. I, I can't remember. Not Barney. Definitely not Barney. It's uh, it's it's kind of the anti Barney. Uh, hopefully, I <laughs> tried I realized part way through, it's like this is looking kind of Barney-ish. Mm. Anyway, um, the Chamberlain is my answer, and I'll let the Oracle think about uh, his answer. Uh, but we're gonna get right to the question that we didn't get to last time. So here we go. We're gonna boom, just dive right in here. This is Old Reindeer Museum, or Reindeer McFarland here on uh, YouTube. I know that they they aren't joining us live right now. Warwick. Yes, Warwick uh, Davis, I want to say, but that might, have, might not be right. Um, yeah, the amazing puppeteer. And just those performances alone, right, um, are, are just outstanding. Um, so, do I have any tips on how to align arms and facial features every time I've made... Everything I've made is lacking in symmetry. I can read. I slept poorly last night. I want occasion trial by stone. No. No, I don't, I don't I can even lift one of those swords. Which, how does a Skeksis lift one of those swords? Their arms are like these tiny little... Um, is it ocular castigation or... Was that the phrase? I remember we, we kind of looked at each other. We're like, that's a good phrase. Um, yeah, that's a whole thing. Mm, coffee is good. So we're going to talk about symmetry. Uh, how to align facial features and things like arms and legs and so forth. Um, I wish I had a simple, quick and industry standard answer, but I don't know any. I'm not saying there aren't any, but if there are, I don't know. Um, but there are some tricks and some some helpers that you can do. It sounded horrible. Yes, yes it did. Um, it, was like, it was like one of the 13 forms of ocular castigation or something like that. It was real good. Um, or this is my favorite form. Anyway, yeah, I gotta go watch that thing again. I, I, I keep thinking about canceling Netflix because I never watch it, but uh, that might be worth it. I think you can buy it now, actually, on, on Blu-ray. So anyway, um, oh, here's something we didn't get. To, I'm going to use this now. I didn't get to show this off last time. I actually had it ready, but we never used it. There's another camera. I've actually, because I've switched around how the cameras work, I have another camera option right now. But first, let's let's go to the top view um, because it's this. I took the GoPro and I put it on the little tripod. And what that means, that question's overlapping. I can't fix it right now, but we will. Um, uh, what this means is I have a little kind of close-up cam that I can move around the, the surface so I can get kind of right down and do close-up demonstrations. Um, I'm gonna try to move the camera. I can see the output on my monitor, so I can I can move it before I switch to it, um, because otherwise it's gonna get real shaky cam, and, and I don't wanna do that to people. I hate shaky cam, so I can imagine how other people feel, but I can sort of position it and move it around. And let's see, that looks like it might be good. So, here are some tips for features like eyes. Um, now, first of all, here, let's switch to the close-up cam. There we go, look at that. A um, little bit, the focus isn't great because it's a GoPro, but you know, what are you gonna do? Um, so there's really two kinds of, let's say you're putting on eyes. Um, features are gonna be mounted usually in one of two ways. You're either gonna mount something onto the head that is has a flat back, so you're gluing it on, um, or it has like a peg system, either a bolt or a dull joint or a safety joint or something like that. Those are the most common. Um, I don't know of any others, but you know, uh, if somebody else uh, has any other ways that they they mount or, or you know put, put features on a, on a head, let me know and we'll talk about those. Um, those are the methods that I use most often. Um, so the question is, how do we how do we like make sure that they're uh, even and centered and all that stuff? So the first way, of course, is to make sure that you know about where your center is. Now, the important thing to remember what that is, usually on a pattern, um, you've got a center line of some kind. I know it's kind of hard to see because we, we did a, a bit of a seam blend on this, but there is a center line right down there. 
So, you know, in real, in real life, I can see that a lot clearer than the camera's picking it up. But nevertheless, we do have a bit of a guide there. Now to remember, uh, one thing to remember about that is as you're building something and, and okay, so the first thing is, um, I know there's probably a temptation to try and mark out where features should go on the pattern. That usually doesn't work out because as you're putting these things together, these are soft materials and they stretch and they compress and they shift around a little bit. And you usually, whatever you mark on the pattern isn't where you've marked it when you build the thing. So those are, if you do that, they're very rough guides and you also don't want to be marking up your materials very much. Um, that can, like I said before, that can show through. That's why we put the pen marks on the inside always. Um, so you want to kind of, that's not, it's not helpful and it's just, you know, it's, it's not worth doing. Um, it's because it's not accurate. Generally speaking, and this is a, an unsatisfying answer, but I'm afraid it is the answer that I have, uh, is you really just kind of got to eyeball it. Um, so you start off with the center line where you think it is. Now remember that that center line you originally drew may not currently be the center line of the object. Let me just tilt this camera up a little bit more. There we go. Uh, over here. I should know left and right is right and left because I'm a puppeteer. Zap! How you doing? Yeah, the Twitch stream done broke and I can't make it not broke. Um, but thank you. Thank you for coming to the new thing that we're doing here, which is Q&A build streams. Um, uh, it's really nice to see you. Thank you very much. Uh, we're going to try to fix Twitch for next time, um, but that's not this time. I can hear Jimmy yelling to come in. Jimmy's not coming in right now. We're in the middle of a demonstration. All right. Um, so first try and figure out where your center is approximately. Remembering of course that the center line you drew probably isn't the exact center of the object anymore. Um, if you are mounting something with a flat base, now these are vacuform blocks. Well, I, just, I got these weird pupils. I don't know where they was coming from. Um, if you've got something that you're mounting with a flat base, right, that you're going to glue on, I wouldn't use these. These are solid resin. I use these as vacuform bucks. Um, I wouldn't use a solid like resin or wood or anything like that because they're just too heavy. And I know it doesn't seem like much every, every little bit on a puppet counts. Um, but I'm just using this as an example of something that's kind of like a flat base that I can glue onto. Generally what you do, or what I do, uh, is I'll take the features that I'm trying to place. This is going to look real weird. <laughs> it's like... It's like half tadpole Kermit, right? Um, I'll place them. I'll just kind of eyeball it. Now, there's things you can do. It's like, look at the distance from the mouth to the bottom of the eye, right? Where it's at the lowest point of the dip. And, you know, you want to sort of make that the same on both sides. Um, you want to make sure there's like an even distance between them. Always, you always want your slight cross-eyedness, right? So just kind of, and you can do this before you put the pupils on even. Uh, yeah, the lead frame puppet, yes. Pac-Man Kermit, exactly. Um, so I'll get an idea of where it just looks right to me by eye. And then what I'll do is I'll hold on to one and I'll take the other away. Make sure I'm keeping that there, holding it exactly where it was. And then you take some pins and you start placing pins around the object to just kind of form a little cage. Use lots, use as many as you need. Baby Kermit would be an interesting project. Yeah, well, there is there is that like young Kermit. They did that special Kermit Swamp Years, I think it's called. It actually looked a little bit like this. Uh, no idea you get the sailor suit, yeah. Well, they did a puppet uh, of, the, of the Muppet Babies. Uh, this isn't this isn't perfect. This is I'm just doing this real quick as a as a demo. But anyway, so that's the kind of thing you do. You just place pins all around it, um, and you'll mark out then where that's going to go. And then, because the pins will hold it there, place the other one. This isn't perfect, but you know, spend time. Uh, that's the thing. Never rush. Always always just take your time. I am rushing, of course, because we're on stream, so this is a bad example, but... 
your pins around it. <laughs> Almost like anime Kermit, yeah. Yelling Akira. Because what you're doing is you're just defining the area where you're going to put glue, right? So the more pins you have, the more easily definable that area is. And then once you've got all the pins in, you can just take these away. And now you've got this really Clive Barker looking thing. <laughs> uh, also question, how have you been? It's been a while. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. There's a whole thing. Um, if you go on the YouTube channel and there's like uh, archives, of these current live streams, I talk about why I stopped Twitch the first time and why we're coming back now and what we're doing. So if you want to catch up, I suggest watching that first one. Um, so anyway, here we go. We've got these pins that are defining the area where the base of the object we want to glue is. So then all you do is you put your glue on the base of the object, as always, and then on the area, just within the area that you define by the pins, uh, yeah, Pinhead Kermit, exactly. Um, and then I'm not going to do that right now because we're going we're gonna to reuse the skin. But then you just place your object on, press it down, use contact cement if you can, not hot glue. Hot glue will work for this as well, but it's way, way messier. Um, and that's it. Uh, and then once you're done, pull all the pins out. So that's how you basically do it with features that you're gluing on that have a flat base. Now, what about things that have pegs? That's different. Let me just unpin head this thing here. Blah. Do you know what size the doll joints you use are? Off the top of my head, I don't know. I got a whole bunch of different sizes. Uh, I use three different sizes. Um, I can get them in a second and see if they have it on the package. I Every time I order them, I have to look up what size I get because I always forget. But let me see if they're actually on the package. Uh, I can st I know you can't hear, but I can hear Jimmy outside yelling to get in. It's a bit distracting. Okay, let's see. Um, so the little tiny ones, I use these for uh, the small arms. Um, no, <laughs> there's no measurement on there. I don't remember. I'd have to look it up. Um, let's see, what about the really big ones? What, I mean, what you can do, no, there's no, there's no label even on these. These are the big ones I use for like live hands monsters and things. Um, what, what it is, what the measurement is, is the diameter of this disc. So you just sort of figure out which, which one, which size you need and go looking for that. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, I got off the top of my head, I don't remember. Like I said, every single time I do this, I have to look it up. Um, but yeah, just figure out what the diameter of the thing that you need is, and, and then go looking for something that's close to that. You don't have to get exactly. Um, the smaller is better than bigger, um, because bigger is going to make the thing flare out. And you don't want that. You want to be able to control it. You could always cut a piece of plastic that's bigger and then use that as a kind of washer on the doll joint, right? Um, all right, there we go. So there's that. So what about things with pegs? So these, these are the uh, safety eyes I use a lot. These are from Puppet Pelts. So these, um, as you can see, like that will be real tough to try and pin on and line up because we've got these pegs sticking in the thing, right? Uh, so how do you do that? What I do is I make little cardboard templates that are the same diameter as, let's get this on, on camera here, uh, that are the same diameter as the base of the object. So these are 42 millimeter, for example, and I punch a hole in the center. Uh, and then I'll lay these on. And again, eyeball it. I'm not doing real good right now, but this is just for demonstration purposes. Hold them on and then I put a pin through the center where that hole is punched. All right, so now we've got that. Now what do you do? What I do, I take, because what we want to do is make a hole, right? And we need to know where, we need the center point where to mark the hole. So I'll take one of these, which is an air dry or an air vanish marker. So this will just fade in like 24 to 48 hours. 
and I won't put the pin in all the way. I'll just lift one of these up and then I'll mark exactly the center point there. Um, and then once I've got the center point, that's when I know where to punch or burn, <laughs> if you're into that, uh, the hole. Uh, and then you've got, and then that's it. And then you have a hole to pop your, uh, your safety eye into. So there's that for facial features. Um, and of course the same thing goes with, you know, noses or eyebrows or anything like that. Just try and temporarily attach them first. The other thing you can do, I've talked about this before, but let's go to the top cam. Let me get this out of the way. Um, the other thing you can do to temporarily attach a feature and to tr try and mark, mark always with pins, don't mark with a marker or anything like that, because of course, if you, things will shift around, you don't want to get, uh, you don't want to get uh, like marker marks on your, on your fleece. Making a human face puppet, uh, I think the other day about how amazing a rinse wind puppet could be. Um, I don't do many humans, but I've been thinking about it. I'm actually, this week I may try doing something. I've been having thoughts about doing like an ogre. I don't want to get too far away from monsters just because I like monsters. But um, something like an ogre might be, might be in the works. Do you get your doll joints on Amazon? Yes, I do. That's exactly where I get them. Um, but of course I'm in Canada. They're not always easy to get, I gotta say. Um, so also try like craft stores will often have them. Um, so yes, we're temporarily attaching features. Um, talked about this before, men's grooming tape. This happens to be top stick. Um, this is toupee tape. It holds quite well, but also comes off cleanly. This is used a lot in professional puppet building, particularly on TV sets and stuff where you have to temporarily attach something to a puppet. Um, this is the stuff. So what you can do is you're doing like eyebrows or something. You can you can put top stick on the back of those, or this is also good to put on the backs of pupils if you want to be able to lift the pupil off and replace it in a different position, right? Um, this is great for doing you know like features like eyebrows because it is removable. You can you can move the things around and you can also just replace the tape once the tape gets not sticky. So, but this is also good for temporarily attaching like a nose or something and being able to place it and then marking it with pins and then putting glue on, et cetera. So that's that. Ooh, that was a lot of talking. Uh, here's a challenge question. If you want to make a two-faced puppet with different faces, oh boy, <laughs> you're throwing me curveballs already, Zep. Um, one, uh, which is the topic, of course. Hmm. Two face. So, do you mean like two heads, uh, like you know that, that Sesame Street monster? Because um, I mean that's literally just two puppets sewn together. <laughs> that's how I do it. Uh, would this be used for whatnot puppets for uh, gag removal noses? Yeah, I am. I mean, I don't know for sure, but you know the famous Ernie removing Bert's nose gag. I think that's probably how they did it. Um, it's not Velcro. I guarantee you that. Um, it could be it just it just goes on and off so easily, right? That it's like, and it stays on too. That's the thing. So it's probably something like like toupee tape. And yes, often for like whatnots and anything Muppets. Um, oh, Two-Face like the Batman villain. Oh, I see what you mean. Uh, whew. Yeah, yeah, Velcro, I mean, obviously, you know, use whatever you want, but Velcro on a professional puppet is not a great idea just because it's very violent, right? It'll, it'll distend the fabric and stuff. And if it's something that you're doing a lot, you're putting, you know, eyes and stuff on and off the puppet, over time, that's really gonna mess up the fleece. So you don't wanna do that. Uh, would you mind doing a demonstration of basic blinking eyes in the future? Absolutely, that is on the agenda. We will be doing a basic uh, eyebrow mech um, probably soon because the next question that uh, Reindeer McFarlane had was about eyes in general. So that's a kind of a good time to, to cover that. So maybe we'll do that next stream. That's, that's distinctly uh, possible. And I'm actually doing an eyebrow mech puppet soon. So maybe we can combine the two and I can make the thing on stream. Uh, nope, we're good, we're good. I'm gonna keep calling you Zap just because I, that's what I'm so used to, but uh, Sir Anon, Sire Anon, sorry. Um, yeah, okay, are we good? I think we're good there. So that was facial features. For things like arms, that's a little tougher. Here, let's get the lizard. Uh, and we can have a look at that. What camera should we go to? Let's see, I can, maybe this one would be fine. 
Um, Frankie's doing fine. He's uh, hanging out right back there, you know. Um, so what I usually do on a puppet that, come on camera, cooperate with me. Uh, on, a, on a puppet that, uh, where I'm gonna decide where the arms are. Hopefully you'll have a seam somewhere on the side that you can use as a guide. And in this case, I do have a little dart that's down there. You can just see it. Um, I'll use that as my kind of guide. And as a general rule of thumb, you kind of want to go in, figure out where the base of your neck is, and then go down maybe an inch or two. You don't want to go too far down on any human proportion to puppet. Um, step is fine. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, yeah, so you don't want to go too far down on any human proportion puppet. The higher up, just, just under the neck, this is where the shoulder would be. Um, so you've kind of got two points of reference there, right? You've got the, you know where the side is, and you know you want to come down an inch from the top, so you just kind of line it up that way. And really, again, it's about eyeballing it. Um, do they have a lining? Well, this one, uh, this one has, so because it's a full body puppet, usually you wouldn't do a sleeve with a full body puppet like this, but I've started doing sleeves with full body puppets because they're nice in that you can then just tuck them up into the body cavity. Um, so this one isn't lined because I used, I used uh, uh, upholstery foam for this. So it's nice and soft and it doesn't, it doesn't feel scratchy or anything. So this didn't really need a lining. It feels, it feels nice anyway. Looks pretty good. Yeah. Um, I love that tooth. Uh, so that's how I align arms uh, and legs are the same thing. I just kind of figure out, you know, legs are usually the, the, the tops of the legs are placed fairly close together usually. Um, Again, depends on, on a kind of fraggly shape like this, like the ones that the legs where they, they start thin and they flare out at the bottom. Um, the tops are usually uh, fairly close together. Something like Kermit, on the other hand, I can't really get down the, the Kermit that has legs. Kermit's legs are a little wider apart, um, but that's just how the character was designed, right? So that will depend on your, on your design itself. But always just try and figure out, find where your center point is and then go like equal, measurements from there and try and get two points of reference on seams and stuff like that and that's it uh yeah those eye bags that's the first time i've done carved dyed foam eye bags and i like it a lot i'm going to do it more it's not the easiest or quickest thing in the world but it definitely looks great so we'll be we'll be doing that more um so that being said let me just we're gonna we're gonna do this the, the back of the chair thing right now so let's let's have a real talk <laughs> because we're going to talk about symmetry in general. Um, one of the things that VJ Geyer talks about, uh, I'm not giving away too much here. Please, please go and take VJ's courses on the Stan Winston School of Character Arts. The camera's being weird. Why is the camera being weird? There we go. Um, one of the things that VJ Geyer talks about is symmetry. Um, and he says that he reached the point where he was trying so hard to make symmetrical puppets, something was bothering him about his puppets seemed kind of lifeless. And he realized was the, the problem was that he was making them too symmetrical. They were too sort of mathematically perfect. Um, so I understand, uh, Reindeer McFarlane, where you're coming from with the, you know, things don't look even. Um, there's a difference between things not looking even and things looking wrong. Um, very few of the Muppets are actually perfectly mathematically symmetrical. Kermit's a great example. I mean, Kermit is not symmetrical at all. Um, speaking of fraggles, uh, do you, do you find toes like the way they have? So I, I usually do, uh, because I've got my famous three toed or three fingered design. I usually do three toes as well. Um, I do them in a similar, in a similar style though. Yeah. Um, so yeah, when it comes to symmetry, uh, there is uh, two schools of thought about it, right? Um, some people are just supernaturally, inhumanly good at making things symmetrical. Um, the name that comes to mind most often is Phil Fletcher in the UK. Phil Fletcher, as a puppet build, he's a masterful puppeteer as well, but he's, his puppet builds are astonishingly good and 
he makes them super fast and he claims he doesn't have a plan. He usually just starts cutting and sees what he comes up with. But I don't know if that's true, then he's at least partly robot because they're so perfect and so absolutely symmetrical. Um, it's astonishing. I am in awe of, of Phil Fletcher's skill. Yeah, he's also really funny. That's the thing. He just, he, he's never going to see this, but Phil, you know, good on you. Um, uh, that's, I, I kind of realized early on in my puppet building career that precision and symmetry was not going to be one of my strong points. And I, I'm okay with that a little bit. We've talked about this, you know, on the Twitch streams before, but a little bit of asymmetry, a little bit of lumpiness of it, it's, there's an organic quality that happens. And look at a lot of the, particularly the early, the Don Celine era Muppets. Um, they're not symmetrical, <laughs> you know, there's, there's, they're a bit rough and a bit crude, but there's something that's charming about that. There's something that's nice about that. So don't be, I mean, obviously symmetry is always the goal, but if you don't hit that goal, it doesn't mean that you failed, right? It doesn't mean you're a bad builder. It doesn't mean that you're not, uh, paying attention or that you don't have attention to detail or anything. It's there's, there's an acceptable level of it, right? Um, Dial it in as best you can, but if you don't quite hit it, that's okay. I don't, I don't think I've ever sold a puppet that's perfectly symmetrical. No, no puppet is perfectly symmetrical. Look at Warwick Brownlaw Pike. Thank you. That's that's the name. Um, yeah. Speaking of Phil Fletcher, I think they work together a lot, right? On in like CBBS or something like that. Um, yeah. Boy, I'm getting derailed a lot. Uh, symmetry. Yes. Uh, look at the Oracle's ears sometime <laughs> when he's looking straight at the camera. They are nowhere near symmetrical. Uh, thankfully, I managed just by luck to get his eyes pretty good. But um, don't don't overstress about it. Uh, roll with it. Uh, I just happen to like the kind of designs that suit asymmetry. Um, if that's not what you're into, then you do really kind of have to try harder. Uh, Dodge and Hacker T Dog. Yes, thank you. Um, yeah, boy, we got knowledgeable people here. I'm a little intimidated. It's fine. Um, but yeah, so that's that's what I have to say about symmetry. Don't don't over stress about it. Obviously, aim for it. Obviously, there's such a thing as too uneven unless you're making you know Quasimodo or something. Um, but don't worry too much about it. A little bit of organic asymmetry is nice. Uh, and so if you, if you realize that you're not the most precise person in the world, come up with designs that work to that, right? Play to your strengths. So that's what I do because I am not the most precise, you know, uh, person for this kind of thing. So I just try and come up with designs that look good if they're not, uh, symmetrical. No, please, please. It's all good. Thank you. Um, we want facts on this stream. Okay, so there, we finally answered the question that I meant to uh, answer last week. So that means we're coming down to the big practical demonstration part if we review our agenda. <laughs> so, oh goodness, if there's anything wrong with being a geek, nobody would be in this stream, come on. Um, so we're gonna try this. Let's go to the, let's go to the overhead cam. Um, get rid of the agenda. <clears throat> Let me put the table cam aside here. So here we have the head that we've been working on. Um, this skin is glued in as I normally do with the gluing the fabric mouth plate to the mouth plate. And this is pretty much done. Now the, the thing about one of the many nice things about contact cement, um, no one is perfectly bilateral symmetrical, which is why, um, yes, which is why uh, when they see the mirror one side of the face looks so creepy. Exactly. Humans aren't symmetrical. <laughs> like this, nothing is really symmetrical um, in nature. So don't, uh, don't sweat it is the lesson. Um, one thing you can do, and one thing that's done with professional puppets a lot that need repairs and things is, is among the reasons we use contact cement is contact cement can be reactivated with heat. So that means you can take a puppet that's built and open it up and repair it and then close it up again. 
Uh, this also goes for taking a skin off of one puppet and putting it on another. So let's say for in, this is a perfect example. I have this pattern, the skin is going to be the same, but I made some alterations to the skull pattern, but the skin is, uh, is going to be the same. And I don't want to, you know, this fleece is, this is the good stuff. This is not, a, this is not uh, super cheap. So you don't want to waste this whenever you've got it. So if I can reuse this skin, I'm going to reuse this skin. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to take a hair dryer. First of all, we're going to pop it back around like that. Um, we're going to take a hair dryer and we are going to gently heat it up and gradually pull apart the seam. Uh, if you reheat the contact cement, will it release toxic vapors again? Yes. That's why we're going to use a mask and open the window. Um, yes, absolutely. Anytime that you've got, you know, active contact cement, it's making, it's making bad stink that you want to not breathe in. Um, good question. So that's what we're going to do. Now, it, the thing to remember here is you are applying heat. This kind of nylon fleece is a polymer. Foam is a polymer, i.e. plastic. This stuff will melt if it gets too hot. So don't make it too hot. You need to make it warm enough that the glue will reactivate and you can pull this apart, but not so hot that you're like melting this stuff, right? That's the, that's the trick of this. You just kind of get a feel for it. Do it gently, do it slowly. This is like, like doing art preservation or something, right? We're gonna be slowly peeling away and teasing this apart. Thankfully, because I use plastic, that's gonna help a little bit because plastic is non-porous. And so that glue is just sitting on the surface. It hasn't soaked into the, uh, the fabric. Um, so that's gonna help us a little bit. Now, this may not work. Sometimes this doesn't work. Sometimes you pull too hard and you pop some stitches or you just things can go wrong. This is not a guaranteed works every time. So it's entirely possible that we will ruin the skin <laughs> in this process. But um, I figure, you know, one of the things I really liked about the BJ Geyer courses is since they're archives of live streams, he was doing this all live. And because of that, not everything went perfectly every time. And sometimes he would make a mistake or something would, you know, not happen the way he expected it to. And he had to deal with that in the moment. And that was very, very helpful and very instructive for a bunch of reasons. One, for practical reasons, and two, because seeing like one of the biggest professionals in the industry also makes mistakes, right? Um, that was that was very helpful. So uh, I figure even if this goes wrong, showing you how it can go wrong is a helpful, uh, useful thing. So we're just gonna try it. We're gonna see where we go. Um, and that's that. Now, this isn't, uh, because this is reactivating glue, and obviously the longer the glue has been set, the harder this is. And this has been like three weeks <laughs> about this has been set. So that's, it might be a little tough. The fresher the glue, the easier this is to do. Uh, but we're just gonna give it a shot and try. Now this won't release that many um, toxic vapors. So I could probably get away without a mask for this part, but um, best practices, let's just do the right thing from the beginning. So let me clear off some space. Let's get rid of these eye things we're using for examples. Forgive me for standing up and making the camera get weird. Uh, okay, I'm gonna open the window. Get the fan going. It's cold out there. But that's okay. And we've got a lot more light now. Oh boy. <laughs> Showing how it could go wrong. Yeah, that's how I learned not to soak the pump in lighter fluid before the pyrotechnic display. Exactly. Um, ah, it's a lot more light. I'm, I'm looking paler than normal. Um, oh well, what are we gonna do? That's all we can do. Is it, is it too light on the camera here? This would be a serious pain to try and fix. Hang on. No, I can't do it manually. Hmm. Give me a second. Me, I don't care if I'm washed out, but the, uh, 
the overhead cam, I do kind of care. So let me see if I can, uh, if I can do something about that via the app. Turn down the ISO. Live camera editing. This is fun. Please connect. Please, please connect for Bluetooth. Thank you. Thank you, Zapod. We will try not to blow anything up, although I can't promise anything. We haven't used fire yet, but was, at some point we will be. Uh, maybe not this stream, but fire, as Zep knows, fire is always involved in some capacity. Um, come on, connect. Connect. <gasps> I think I'm connected. All right, give me a sec here. Let me try turning down the ISO. Nothing. What is happening? Nothing's working. Nothing's working. It's not doing anything. <laughs> this is exactly the opposite to what I wanted to happen. At the very least, I wanted something. I'll live with it. Let's see if I can move the curtains a bit. We need to have the, the fan exposed, that's the thing. We need to be able to have air venting outwards. Blow the poison outside, I say. But I may be able to block some of that light. It's too much, too much light. I should have planned ahead. This is what happens when you don't plan ahead. That's all right. We're gonna we're gonna do this. Everything's fine. I don't know why you're panicking. Yeah. Got it. Here we go. All right. Cool. <laughs> That'll do for now. Uh, just because I'm just because I'm like that. Let me see if we can quickly. Drop the ISO on the face cam. There we go. All right, we'll close the window, but we won't close the curtains, so the light level should stay the same. Okay, there we go. Much better. All right. Um, so, good old, good old this. We have a lot of snow up here. So we got a little dusting. We didn't get much last time. Actually, you know what? I haven't looked outside all that carefully. I can hear people shoveling those, so maybe we got more than I, I think I got we got more than I thought. Yeah, we seem to have there's some definitely some accumulation out there. Um, I need the other mic, so I got to mute the mic for a second while I attach the other mic. Give me one second. One two, one two. There we go. All right, this is gonna, this is gonna get weird. Hang on, I should have. Hang, I gotta mute it again. One, two, one, two, all right. I realized last time it was hard to hear me a bit, so I'm going to speak louder, hopefully. It's gonna be a little bit better, although not gonna be perfect, but it's better than dying, I guess. All right, here we go. So, hair dryer with the heating element on. Gently and slowly, we're gonna warm up inside here, inside here, and try and reactivate this glue.
How many yards of fleece, fur, and foam do I buy at a time? It really depends on what I'm working on. Um, fleece and fur, usually two yards at a time of every color that I need. Foam is generally whatever I can get because foam can be hard. Um, so I usually get rolls of like, well, I don't really know off the top of my head. I can, I can check. Big. Lots. <laughs> Not industrial quantities, but certainly enough. quite hot so we're just warming up the area peeling it back a little bit warming it up again peeling it back and you see we're starting to get there yeah the noise filter is pretty good One thing you can see, maybe we go to this camp, is you see how the glue is coming off of the plastic but staying on the fabric. And that's because the plastic is non-porous, but the fabric is. So the glue is soaked into the fabric, but not the plastic. If this was wood, this would be a whole lot harder. Progress. It's getting there. Sometimes it'll start to go all at once because you've just heated up the whole area enough that it starts to release. It's like we're at that point. You just have to be patient. take a little break and talk about the oracle anyway there we go we got it off now i know this looks terrible don't worry about it it'll be fine oh give me a second i'm gonna switch mics again Thank you. 
All right, there we go. Um, wow, <laughs> that was a bit nerve wracking. Um, the Oracle, yeah, so I would definitely have thoughts <laughs> about new Oracle episodes, like the whole for the full episodes on YouTube. Um, the problem is I got stuck in, into TikTok and TikTok is so much easier for me to make content for because like all I have to do is think up one gag. I don't even write down the scripts for TikTok. I just remember them and uh, shoot the video. It's literally like an hour uh, of my time. Whereas an Oracle episode that can take like a whole day to, to put together. So I would absolutely love to. It's really just a matter of time versus bang for my buck, right? Um, so that's why I'm doing like the compilation stuff for YouTube now from the TikTok videos. Cause I know not everybody wants to be on TikTok. Don't blame you. I don't really want to be on TikTok either. Um, it just happens to be where the audience is, right? So uh, yes, planning maybe <laughs> a bit of a stretch, but I would like to. Um, I would like to, uh, oh, Jamie, thank you so much for the coffee. I. There needs to be a better audio cue for that. I missed one last time, I, I realized. Um, thank you very much. Much appreciated. I guess I should point that out. Yes, you can You can buy me a coffee. You can donate. All money made from the stream goes back into the stream. Um, I would like to get a better camera for the face cam. So that's the first goal. Um, but anyway, yes. So yeah, I would love to do more Oracle. I would love to do more Oracle stuff in general. Like I've, I had big plans for like what season two was going to be. And I've got characters and plots and all that kind of thing. But um, it's just a matter of time, right? Because the store is, is where is literally what pays my rent, right? So I have to focus on that as my number one priority. Everything else is literally just a hobby. Um, yeah, thank you. I, you know, I, I love making them. I love those characters or, you know, those characters are a part of me, right? So um, that's why you'll hear them come out so often. But uh, uh, yes, yes, I would absolutely love to do more. Hopefully I'll be able to find the time to do more. Um, uh, but until then, the TikTok videos will have to suffice. Um, and I kind of like, I just like the, the short, quick format of TikTok. Um, I think my style of humor works well in that format, so... Uh, it's, it's really hard to, to put together a funny Oracle episode. It takes a lot of work. Um, uh, maybe one day I'll have helpers too, you know, and that'll, that'll be great. So there we go. So thank you for the question. Um, I'm glad the Oracle has fans. That's, that's the biggest thing, right? It's just, I'm just happy someone wants more. That's the big thing. Um, coffee. So now that we've done that, next on the agenda, is the hopefully part. The hopefully part is probably going to work because this is fine now. This is exactly what I wanted to happen. So we're good. We are going to glue this skin to the new skull. Um, I don't want to throw this out. This is still a usable skull, um, but this is the one I want to go with for our final build. So I'm going to put this aside. I'll use this for something else. That's that's reticulated foam. I don't want to I don't want to waste it because that's not that's not the cheap stuff. Oh, can you imagine me having an assist for Frankie and Frankie having both arms working at the same time? <laughs> that would be great. I would love that. Um, so next thing, we're going to put this head aside. And dun, 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 the barge. <laughs> Usable skull is okay. <laughs> yes, well, then there's all the ones we rejected. Um, so yeah, so now all we're going to do is we're going to glue this skin onto this skull. And the nice thing about the way we mounted the mouth plate, it, by way of a bit of a review, yes, once the pandemic is over, we're definitely going to look at that. Um, I'll train up Jamie, because Jamie lives close to me. So. Um, I haven't put grips in this yet. Um, I'm still thinking about it. I, I think I maybe will. Um, but uh, but I'm still, you know, I, once you're at this point, it doesn't matter if the skin's on or off. Uh, it's harder to put grips in after it's done, obviously, but at this point, it's not gonna be any harder if the skin is on it or not. So I'm still thinking about grips or what kind of grips I want for this. We'll see. 
Anyway, so now we're just going to do the, the, the good old glue in the mouth plate, uh, the fabric mouth plate to the rigid mouth plate. And the nice thing about this is because of the way that we recessed and set in this mouth plate, we've got a really easy to follow guide about where, you know, where this should go and how this should sit in there. And plus, since we've got the gap in the back, this is kind of flexible, right? So we can, we can you know, dial it in. Yes, I know, and also the overbite is great. And that's that's another nice thing about the recessed mouth plate is it creates this really, really nice overpronounced overbite. Some of that's gonna go away once the skin gets on it, because the skin's gonna kind of push all this stuff up and compress it. Um, have you thought about stringing a fishing line from the loose arm, just like Big Bird? Yeah, um, I don't, I've never needed the other arm to be active, um, particularly for the TikTok stuff, because Frankie barely fits on the screen. Right, so that you never see the other arm. It's not really a priority. Um, what I can do is, you know, like, like I stuff it and pen it or something like they do with the Muppets, like with Fozzie or something, isn't, uh, doesn't have both arms working. Um, it's never, it's never been a thing. Uh, if, if I have another performer, then we could just do more with Frankie. Um, but that's for the future. Um, so let's get going. Let's just glue this in because we've got like a whole hour to fill yet. So I don't, maybe we're getting through this too fast, but we'll see. I'm gonna, the mask has got to go back on because we're dealing with the barge. I also have to get gloves going here. Moment. Um, yeah, so, so the fishing line thing is like, yeah, it's a, it's a good idea. But the thing is for Big Bird, because you always see his whole body, you kind of need that arm to at least do something, right? But something like Frankie, the eye is never there, right? So. You, Keep things as simple as they possibly can be unless you need it to be something else. And with Frankie, we don't need that, so I'll take my rings off for this. Um, okay, switching over mics. Gonna mute for a sec. Plus one, two, yeah, there we go. So that's the thing, right? Always never, like, have as few points of failure as possible. I know the, the fishing line, you're, for what you're doing, you're not getting that much uh, return, and it's just another thing that can go wrong, right? So keeping it simple is always the best. Gloving up and barging it down. Something, something, catchy catchphrase. Uh, okay, so we're gonna start. Actually, I'm just noticing this, this glue didn't catch right on the edge here. You see how that's pulling away? I wanna fix that first. Yeah, I have it on both sides. Okay, I'm gonna fix that first. We're gonna make sure this is glued in completely. The new tin of barge, it's quite full. One problem with new tins of barge is it's very easy to get too much glue. Using too much glue is a very common mistake. How much does contact cement uh, cost on average? Make it any locally. Yeah, you know what? That hundred bucks is probably about right. So with uh, delivery, and it's actually classified as a hazardous material because it is. Um, this is about sixty bucks for me for a pint of barge. 
I guess it's a plank. It's a better plank. Um, yeah. So that's that's probably about right. You, unfortunately, you gotta pay for the good stuff. Um, now the thing is, this will last quite a while. This will last me a few months. Uh, so over time, and you know, if you amortize that over the cost of the puppets that it's going to build, it's 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 fine. It's just part of the price of doing business, right? But if you want the good stuff, you know, unfortunately, you do have to pay for it. That's one place you cannot. Uh, there's no shortcut. You got to get the good stuff. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad somebody knows the joke about Dolchire. I used to play WoW way back when, yeah. I'm so happy somebody got the Goldshire joke. <laughs> Alright, there we go. So that's all that's all nice and glued in there now. Here we go. I'm not currently playing any MMOs, but I am playing Horizon Forbidden West, which I'm quite enjoying. Check out my Twitter for my thoughts on that. At Operation Puppet, of course. And please don't ask me about Elden Ring. You're not an enjoyer of Souls likes. So let's just leave it at that. Man angry about video games on YouTube. News footage. Border Alliance buff. <laughs> I think my highest level character was Horde. I had a goblin. Of course I had a goblin. Yeah, I'm really enjoying the new horizon. Yeah, I'm an old MMO player from way back. I beta tested EverQuest. You heard it. So yeah, I know this looks awful. Don't worry about it, it's just glue. It's on the inside, you're never gonna see it. But we are reapplying the glue. This glue is all dry, it's not viable anymore. do mouth plates I don't dry it uh, as much as I normally would I like to leave it a little bit loose just in case I have to reposition yeah well the horde has got had goblins or has goblins so that's when I I used to play lights and then they introduced goblins and that's when I was just like well now I have no choice I have to play a goblin
All right, now the tricky part. This is also the part that I'm going to take off a glove so I can feel inside if there's any wrinkles and things that need to get smoothed out. Always gets a little fiddly. I wish I could show this a bit clearer, but I can't. So I've got a big wrinkle on the inside here, so I'm just pulling this apart. repositioning that can do itself which is not great uh, this is not cooperating of course not I'm on stream why would you cooperate There we go. Okay, I think we got it. There's always a bit of a struggle to get rid of the wrinkles. I think we're good. Feeling around in there. Yeah, this is this is one of the most stressful parts. In fact, I think it might be the most stressful part. That and like when you're finally attaching the eyes and stuff, it just because you know you got one shot and that's it. But the thing is, remember, you don't. You don't have just one shot. You can pull this apart. You can reseed it. Learning to not be nervous about this was one of the biggest helps uh, that I ever that I ever figured out. Okay, I think we're all right. I think we're good. Here we go. We're going to line up the center lines here, turn it. Mm -hmm. We're good. We're going to gently just kind of massage it down. Too aggressive. Okay, all right. Yeah, well, you you are always getting, one of the nice things about this recessed mouth plate uh, is it, it gives you a really good guide, as you can see. Like that's pretty even, uh, and that's just because I just have a little shelf in there that I can just follow. Okay, we're good. Aha! In the words of Doctor Frankenfurter, I just love success. All right, Woo. I get to take the mask off now. <laughs> All right, barge is sealed. The fan is still venting, so I'm still safe. I'm taking the mask off. Give me a sec to switch the mic around. One, two, one, two. Are you all seeing this? Congratulations, you received 100 messages today with Restream Chat. I don't think anybody else is seeing that. I just got a thing on Restream Chat congratulating me that there's been 100 messages today. First time I've seen that. Thank you for all the messages, everybody. Apparently, I've won the internet. Okay, there we go. So, wow. We did it.
We took a skin off of one head and put it on another. I mean, we are now, we, we're basically surgeons now. We can just do their job. But see, that's real nice. So we still got that overbite. There's, there's a little ridge in here now. So if we want to put teeth or tongue or something in there, that'd be real great. You have a option to purchase your goblin patterns off Etsy, uh, like directly from your website. Not yet, but thinking, thinking about that. Um, the pattern might be a real good option for that, actually. Hmm. Um, yeah, because Etsy's, 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 just, it's time. It's time to think about migrating off of Etsy. They're uh, less and less useful and helpful. Excellent, Jamie. Um, look what we did. <laughs> it worked. Against all odds, it worked. So there we go. We've got our head ready for the next phase. So what is the next phase? Um, we've got, oh, wow, we've got almost a three quarters of an hour to kill. Um, that's fine. Time is good. Um, time is good because it's coffee time. This is the last of my coffee. I will have to make more, I think. Um, yeah. So I think the next steps um, are gonna be, now that we've got a head shape, that we're happy with and we you know again this is something that we designed from scratch on the previous stream so go back and watch the archives if you haven't um i think body will be the next thing we're gonna do again simple head we're gonna do a simple body but in demonstrating the principles of how you're going to pattern this uh you'll you'll be able to that's a skill you'll be able to build off of right so um that's it for now. We can, if, there, if there's more chat questions, uh, fire away. If not, I'll look up another viewer question that we can get to here. Uh, yeah, Heath, I think, I think what Demon Dreamer was saying is, is there some place that they can buy the pattern um, that isn't Etsy, <laughs> because Etsy's being, Etsy's being bad. Etsy's upping their fees yet again. How do you go about lining the inside of a puppet? Good question. Um, let me see if I have, oh, you know what? We can use this, <clears throat> we can use this skull as an example. Uh, do we have anything else? No. Okay. Um, so... First, let's talk about why you'd want to do uh, a lining. There's a couple of reasons. Um, one is because it's comfortable. Um, <clears throat> the other is because if you're making it out of reticulated foam, uh, like as this is, uh, it's a little scratchy. So any place that it's touching the performer's skin <clears throat> can be a little abrasive. Excuse me, I gotta get a lozenge. I made a terrible discovery that these sugar-free Fisherman's Friend lozenges that I that I gobbled down are a gram of saturated fat per lozenge. That's bad. Particularly, I'm on a I'm on a diet. I'm on a quite strict diet. I have to be diabetic. So, oh boy, let me tell you, that was an un unhappy discovery. Anyway, um, so lining. So if you're using reticulated foam, then wherever this is touching the performer's skin is gonna be a little scratchy, a little bit abrasive. It's not nice. Uh, it doesn't feel good. Uh, another reason why you might wanna use a lining is if you've got a situation <clears throat> like our certain frog friend here, uh, Kermit actually has a double thickness of fleece. And it's one of the things that helps hold the head shape. I'm getting the Kermit out every stream now. That's just, that's just the way it is. Um, uh, because there is a lining in here, uh, and the lining is the same fleece that I used for the head, um, so there's a, like a double thickness of it. It helps keep the shape a little bit more, um, but it also feels real good, right? <clears throat> and also like when you do the kermit things, you don't really see like your fingers poking out. The fleece that we get nowadays isn't quite as heavy as the original Antron fleece. So 
um you can it's, it's it's thinner and you can just see fingers poking out and stuff and that's not nice for kermit so <clears throat> we do a double thickness um which is basically a lining the way i did the lining for kermit was i just used the same head pattern um and made a second head basically but i didn't hand stitch it i just sewed it on the machine because it's the lining you never see it right <clears throat> oh my voice is going excuse me um but for something like this um, I usually don't do a full lining because that's kind of what's the point. Uh, there's a lot of places in here where the performer skin isn't touching, like around the, the dome of the head and stuff like that. So there's no there's no point in lining it. Um, that sugar-free root beer barrels. It's good to know. I will look into that. Um, so one thing you can do is literally just make kind of a sock puppet shape out of um i usually use polar fleece which is like the inexpensive fleece but it's really nice it's very soft it feels very good um and just make kind of like a, a very simple sock puppet shape uh and you can then glue that to the interior of the mouth plate um usually before you put the mouth plate in it's just easier um the other thing that i will often do is i will just sort of figure out well the only place that my hand is touching foam is around the kind of entrance uh to the puppet uh, at the neck hole so i'll just make like a strip of polar fleece and i'll glue that inside and then i'll sort of overlap the edge a little bit and then glue it down and we just kind of have like a like you know it's, a, it's around the rim um line of polar fleece and that's plenty that's that's usually enough to to get you there um, so there, that's how you do, uh, that's how I do a lining. Some people do always do full linings, and that's great. Um, I don't really feel the need to do that. I think it's, you know, it's a little bit, why are you lining something that, that the puppeteer is never touching? If your puppet is small, by all means, uh, linings are great. Um, and also linings are useful in that you can sort of turn the lining into a neck tube as well. If you're doing a puppet whose head could come off the body, you're not stitching the neck down. <clears throat> you can have the um, the lining just become the sleeve that goes all the way through the body. So there's that. Boy, we may be ending soon because my voice is going. What's happening? I don't know. I got the COVID. I don't have COVID. <clears throat> I don't think I do. Um, let me grab some more questions. Got them here somewhere. I thought I had them here somewhere. Live stream Q and A. Here we go. Um. Yeah, I'm gonna. I have some throat coat. Um, throat rescue tea. Ah, here's a good one. All right, I'm gonna, we're doing this all professional, like, hang on. Um, go to the desktop, find question.txt, paste this in here. Save that, there we go, question time. There we go. My friend and client, Kyle Baudet, who is, FYI, an amazing uh, artist, illustrator, and sculptor. Um, what's a good spot to get clothes for puppets? Now, this is not something that I do very much because uh, most of my puppets are monsters and they don't tend to wear clothes. The Oracle's the one example I've got of a, of a puppet wearing clothes and it's, that robe is unbelievably simple. It's literally just a T-shape two pieces sewn together. Um, but for actual clothes clothes, um, a lot of people will um, get like infant clothing is a good option. I can't remember what the age range for your average, you know, medium sized puppet is at quite young. Um, but a lot of times, particularly things like, you know, the Muppets and stuff like that, they'll just tailor everything themselves. That's all custom made stuff. 
let's go back to this <clears throat> camera. Um, so, I mean, if you're good at sewing, you can just get clothing patterns and slice them down, scale them down, and literally just tailor your own clothes. A lot of the professionals do that. Um, also, uh, Build-A-Bear Workshop, um, those costumes you can get for those stuffed animals and things, a lot of those will fit, uh, will fit your average, you know, um, four or five inch mouth plate with a uh, puppet. So there's some options. Um, again, I don't, they don't really worry about it because like jelly rolls, like that thing is just literally tubes that is a turtleneck, right? So it's just tubes of fabric. Um, I don't, I'm not a tailor, so I haven't done elaborate costuming on my puppets yet. Um, at some point, I think I probably will, but uh, so those are, those are the options I'm aware of that are available. So there you go, Kyle. Thank you for your question. I hope I'm going to point out on uh, Twitter to Kyle, because I don't think Kyle was able to watch these streams very often. So I'll make sure that Kyle knows that I uh, answered the question. Next question. We're finally knocking this list down. <clears throat> so we did the symmetry. Ah, I think if Heath is still with us, here's a question from Heath. the word reply in there. I just copied it from whatever social media <laughs> platform. I can't remember where it was. I think it was probably Twitter. Um, all right, let's see. Is that going to work? There we go. How do you attach your hair and along that line ears? Two different ways. Hey, Heath, how you doing? Okay, we're getting to your question. Um, and then suddenly my throat's better. Hair. Uh, let me see if I have anything that I can do a quick practical demonstration. Not really. What's our time like? We got half an hour. Let's let's do a quick do a quick thing. Facebook, yeah, probably. I don't remember. I'm everywhere. Not that I want to be, but you know. Um, why is he getting the can of Super 77 out? Because this is a very convenient circle. That's why. <clears throat> and um, let's grab some scrap fur here. And we're going to pretend like we're making hair for this head. So what I usually do is I'll figure out um, I'll figure out what I want my hairline to be. Actually, if we're going to do this, let's do this for real. Not for real, for real, but for like, you know, a little bit more elaborate. Um, how do you decide what you want the hair shape to be? Uh, one real good way is to do paper towel patterning. So let's say you don't have a pattern uh, and you want to put hair, you, you want to do something real simple. Um, this is how I did jelly roll, for example. You do paper towel patterning. So you get yourself some paper towel. Pull that off and you lay that over the surface, wherever you're going to pattern. And then you just draw, let me grab a Sharpie here. We may be messing up our fleece. I hope not. This is going to soak through. Be careful <laughs> if you're doing this. Um, you just sort of draw the shape that you want. And remember, it's fur that you're going to be working with. So you don't need a super high degree of precision. So let's say, you know, we could maybe about that is the hairline that I want. So then, cut this out. I mean, you use paper towel because it's just, it, it lies over the surface a little bit easier. And you can do this with, you know, facial features, like, you know, mustaches or eyebrows or anything. Anything you want to make that's an applique that you're going to stick on the puppet. So again, 
not super precise. You can you can get more precise, like you can make this fold this in half and then make this symmetrical. Right, here we go. Now we can just sort of get an idea. It's probably about right. Again, I'm not I'm not doing this for real, but I'd be taking more care if I was. This is just by way of an example. And then we take our pattern. Um, if you just want to do a circle of hair, then that's what that's where you'd use like the bottom of a tin or something and just make a circle. This is if you want to do like a shaped hairline kind of thing. Um, where did I put my marker? There we go. This is just some scrap. This, this, believe it or not, is scrap <laughs> for me. <laughs> this isn't big enough to really do much with, except for something like this. So we're just going to trace our little quickie pattern. Again, we're not being super duper accurate or anything. Now, for fur that has... You know, fur's always got this netting on the back. Um, I don't like uh, seeing the netting. Uh, it, just, it looks awful to me. Oh, also, I should have pointed this out. Before you draw the pattern, pay attention to what direction the fur is going in and figure out what direction you want the hair going in. Um, I didn't with this, so we're just gonna take whatever it gives us, but uh, that's something to be aware of. But we know that this is the front right here. So, Wherever we cut, um, wherever direction the fur is going in, the, the opposite direction is going to be kind of a raw fur edge. Wherever the fur is laying over, you're not going to see the edge of the netting, but you will see the edge of the netting on the other side. So what I usually do is I kind of go, okay, well, the fur is going in this direction. So that means this edge is going to be covered up by the fur unless we style it which is also another option. Um, but this edge is going to have a raw netting side, so we don't want that. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a little seam allowance. Uh, and then when we come to uh, cut this out, we're going to glue this edge over uh, following our guide uh, and, and make it sort of the fur is kind of bent over. I'll show you. I'll just cut this out real quick. I won't glue it because because glue. But hopefully this exacto knife is sharp. Sharp enough. And again, you don't have to be super duper accurate with, with fur, because fur is always fur hides all sins. There we go. There's our little toupee. Right, so we see since the fur is going uh, in this direction towards the front, if we were to flip that over, right, we put that on the puppet, this fur is, is laying over the fleece edge. You have a demonstration of styling with glue. That's a real good question. Um, I, I, we can, but not right now. <laughs> uh, that will take some prep, but um, yeah, absolutely. We will get to that. I'll, I'll put it in the queue. Um, I like, I like styling with white glue quite a lot, actually. Um, maybe we can do it now. I don't know. Let me see. Hang on. We'll just get through this and we'll see. Um, so what I would do because I've got, you see, yeah, focus. See how we've got this raw netting on the edge here? That's not very nice. I don't like that. So that's why we do the seam allowance and then we just fold, just fold that edge over and glue it. And then we've got, <laughs> you can see Goro's here as well, for either hides or creates sin, right? Um, and then what we'll ha end up with is an edge like that. You know what? Let's get our close up cam. This is a good, a good use for that. See where we at here. There we go. So we've got our raw netting edge, and we're gonna not for real, but let's pretend that we've glued it over like that. So now the edge is gonna look like that, right? Um, and that's much nicer. Sorry, shaky cam, I forgot. <laughs> let's go back here. 
Um, so let's pretend that we've done that. You don't have to go all the way around. You just have to go until the fur uh, is at the right point where it's hiding the edge. So let's say here's our hair, all done, ready to go on the puppet. Um, first thing I do is I lay it on, I figure out, you know, where does it want to sit? How is it looking? She looks pretty good. <laughs> um, and then usually if I'm building something for the shop, uh, this is where it gets, uh, uh oh, are you serious? Are we getting Russian spam? What is this? What is, talk about timing. There we go, blocked. And blocked on restream. Goodness me, what was that? Ugh. That's all we need is some Russian spam on the... It's a false flag, it really is. All right, so what I usually do for hair this style, just kind of this toupee style. I'll just use hot glue. This is one of the few times where I will advocate for the use of hot glue. Um, uh, but this is one of, the, one of the places where it can be handy. Now, the important thing to remember is with hot glue, you got one shot. There's no second chances. Um... Yes, Travis, yes. I uh, Hopefully, again, it's always, as always, a matter of time. Um, but I think this year I might release the Greebly pattern. I've got, I've got a new body for it that I like a little bit better, so I think we'll probably be updating that and then doing that. That's probably the next pattern. Um, because I'm usually in a hurry, I'll use hot glue. Um, the thing to remember, as I said, you got one shot. So you've got to be sure of where you're putting it. So what I usually do with the hot glue is I'll put it all around the edges first, but not quite to the edge edge, because when you press it down, that glue is gonna squish and, and spread out. So you wanna make sure you've got some room that you're not pushing the glue out over the edge. Um, and then I'll put some in the center and then I'll just very, very carefully, but quickly, <laughs> line it up, plop it on, press it down, and that's it. And that's how, like, I don't, I don't know that any puppet I've ever sold in the store. I've done any other way. Of course, there's risk <laughs> with that. I've gotten so used to it that I'm pretty good. I don't think I've ever had a major mishap. However, um, that is not the best way <laughs> to do it. That's just how I do it because I'm usually trying to trying to burn through it. The other way, of course, is to use contact cement and actually do just like we showed earlier put this on use pins to mark where it should go contact cement contact cement and then carefully and slowly place the hair down and do it that way that's the correct way that's the way you should do it don't do what i do do what i say <laughs> right so um or again if you're in a hurry bang just slap it on with some hot glue but you gotta be real real careful with the hot glue work with the hot glue first like literally just squirt some out see how it's behaving uh learn how to like not have the spider webs coming off of the end of the uh, of the hot glue the way you do that is you just you don't pull away quickly you just let the hot glue finish coming out of the glue gun uh and that will stop the spider webs when you're when you're pulling glue away what vector program do i use for patterns i use affinity designer um i used to use illustrator but then i got off of all adobe products and now i'm using affinity designer uh, I usually, if I'm if I've done a hand drawn pattern, I'll uh, scan it in on the flatbed scanner and then just take it into Affinity Designer and do vectors and trace all around that. <laughs> yes, Keith, there you go. So that's how I usually attach hair. Um, ears are different. Ears and things like tails or like other features like that that are, you know, like something let's say that's, the, you know, foam that's covered in fleece, so that kind of thing. Um, I'll pin it. I don't really have anything that's already made. I can't really show a, an example um, of this. So 
Yeah, Affinity is, uh, there's Affinity Photo and Affinity Designer. Photo will also do what you need. Uh, photo is the closest to Photoshop. Um, it really is a Photoshop replacement. You can, I haven't been able to do, I haven't done anything with Affinity uh, Photo that I haven't been able to do with Photoshop. Uh, if you don't want to pay a monthly fee, Affinity Photo <laughs> is my recommendation. Um, and it's also got vectors, so you can do all your vector stuff in there. Um, so for ears, let me see, can I do something real quick? Not really. <laughs> Unfortunately, no. Uh, oh, you know what? Here. Here, I know. Here, we got that nose. Remember that nose? <laughs> so let's pretend this nose was something that we were going to stitch on. Okay, instead of gluing it on. I would also, I would probably glue this, uh, this as well, unless I was doing it where I was mounting it this way, and then I would probably put a doll joint in there. Um, but let's say we were going to stitch this on. So we've got a fleece covered something. This could be an ear, could be a nose, could be whatever. Horns, tail, you know. So the first thing I do is I figure out where I'm going to place it, and then we'll just pin it on. Start going around and getting it nice and stable. <laughs> it does look pretty good. Um, the only part I don't like is, is you know, up here. We'd have to do something like big eyebrows or something to hide that. But that, that is also an attractive proposition. Oh, what's that? New follower! Agnostic Jedi! Hello! Thank you! So, just go all the way around and pin it down to exactly where you want it. Every now and then, as you're working with this, you're going to have to sort of reseat these pins, but that's fine. Um, and then I'll just ladder stitch all the way along here. I'll just get the needle and thread and ladder stitch all the way around. Um, and that's it. And I'll do this the same way I'll do ears, tail, the tail for the lizard, done like that. Um, it's, uh, it's a little bit easier if you've got something that has an open edge, like let's say you're putting ears on and you've got that one side that's, you know, that's, that's open where the raw foam is, because then you can kind of pre-glue the foam down and then pin it and stitch just the fleece. And that's a little bit easier because uh, you've got something that's holding it onto the head already and you don't need the pins. Uh, well, you need the pins for the fleece, but the, the foam is being held on there itself. Um, yeah, this is a real, <laughs> it's a real Max. Well, that's how I. That's why I did these noses in the first place was for the Krampus, because I wanted a real Max Fleischer kind of feel uh, for the Krampus, and uh, I think I achieved that. But there, that's that's how I do ears and noses and tails and stuff like that. Um, sometimes with noses, most of the time with noses, I'll still glue it, just with hot glue. Again, time. Because that, the whole stitching around, uh, just, it takes time, right? And sometimes, sometimes I ain't got the time. Um, so there we go. That's that. Have you ever tried follow me eyes? What's follow me eyes? I don't know what, I don't know what that is. Um, but I do know one thing. I'm closing the window. We don't need it open anymore and it's freezing in here. Excuse me. Tell me what follow me eyes are, and I'll tell you if I've ever tried it. Uh, well, the answer is no, because I don't know what they are. <laughs> A little quieter in here now. Um, so there we go. Yeah, good question. Um, where are we at? 15 minutes to go. Hit me up. What do you got? What do you want to know? <laughs> Other than explaining to you what follow me eyes are. Uh, concave eyes that look like they're following you. Oh, that's Jamie asking a question. A technique for suit makers use. Oh, I get so what are they on like like is it gyroscopic or um so no is is the answer, but that's that sounds interesting. I wonder, would that not be an impedance to performance though, right? Like uh unless you're able to control where they look. Um That'd be that'd be cool, but that's like I I uh, rigs in general is a really complicated uh, thing, um, to the extent that like there are still people in in the like the Muppet Repro community who are trying to figure out how Wembley Fraggles I rig works, because that thing is a mystery. Like it 
the fact that they can roll his eyes it's just it's wild like some of the stuff that they're they're able to do at that level is still how do you do that i'm still trying to figure out how moki's uh eyelids work because they're just remarkable and how do you what how is it conforming to the shape that's that's smaller that it's just it's a whole thing <laughs> zoot eyes well sure that's what jelly rolls got zoot eyes right they're just sunglasses <laughs> they're the easiest of all you know what's even easier than that no eyes just eyebrows like the swedish chef that's what if i do the ogre that's what the ogre is gonna have um and i think i'm gonna do if i do the ogre i'm gonna do the ogre as live hands as well that'll be interesting the ogre is probably gonna end up being quite max fleishery this may even be an ogre nose at some point um they can recess the eyes and create an optical illusion that's cool i should look into that um i am of the school of thought i am of the bj geyer school of thought that you you should really dial back on the mechs like uh mechs are fun and very complicated and difficult to build um oh floyd eyes ah that's a whole other thing so floyd and like the menomina i know the menomina character has a name and i can't remember it i'm a bad muppet fan um those are weird like they're so they're they're basically foam tubes but there's some kind of spring in there that's that's like there's a rim around which they are glued and it's squishing and then releasing so there's got to be a return spring in there somehow what it is is anybody's guess like i don't know how that works it's a fascinating thing and i've seen people who've done it um but of course have not revealed their secrets so i it would be cool to figure out but that's that's very it's and it's got to be a very small mech too because you think there's no space in like floyd is quite small there's no space in that head um yeah they're they're, they're quite creepy and that's kind of why i want to do them because they're, <laughs> they're nice and creepy yeah exactly they're yeah they're just like a, they're a they're a cone of foam with a rim and that rim is like wire or not wire but like um uh, like aquarium tubing or something or, or boning or something that can collapse right uh it's it's very odd uh i would love to that would be great but uh that's maybe for a future stream we'll figure we'll sit there and just tinker with uh some fishing line and foam and figure out <laughs> how to do how to do floyd eyes um i'll bet you somebody somebody on one of the forums knows but they're not telling <clears throat> there are there are trade secrets um uh, unfortunately that you don't always get to find those out black fabric inside uh the eye that hides the mech in the back of the eye it's yeah well no because i've seen floyd pull us up and that's they're hollow like there's there's nothing in there um and also floyd didn't get that mech until season two so season one floyd just had solid discs so they were supposed to be like john lennon sunglasses but they changed it for some reason in season two that they could actually blink and it's like that makes no sense now also is creepy but also cool so who knows i'm playing with this nose um yeah boy it's, it's it's fun to speculate about this stuff but as i was saying um i don't do a lot of mechs i'll do you know i've got like a standard eyebrow mech that i make because it's a i like it and b uh it's very much in demand um but i don't i've never gone past that i thought for a while there's a very simple uh kind of ear uh, fold mech that you can do and i thought when i was building the oracle i thought about adding that in it would have been fairly not complicated but it was would have figuring out how to put that in the head uh would have been uh more effort than i think it would have been worth because the problem with mechs in general um not just the fact that there's just another thing that can break but there's a tendency then as a performer to overuse them so when a puppet can blink there's a real temptation for the puppeteer to just constantly be blinking and then that's all you see right um and a good puppeteer can can make you think a puppet is doing something that it cannot physically do and that's the line right the most simple puppet in the world kermit is also the most expressive right because of the talent of the people who perform the, the character uh so that's where i like to come down i like to lean into trying to make this puppet a believable character despite their physical limitations right that's 
that's kind of uh, like Yoda. Yes, very much like Yoda ear movements. It's just a curl. It's just a, um, I don't have any um, aquarium tubing close to hand. Basically you use kind of aquarium tubing or like, um, like a PVC, uh, it's slightly harder than aquarium tubing. And you run a fishing line up it and then you cut wedges into it and you can then like pull on it and it will go kind of curl and bend and then because it's basically a built-in spring return it just returns back to shape and so you use that as a kind of spine and then you can just make ears or tail uh that can curl island mech great, great gonzo yes so gonzo's got an interesting history in that um he started out as uh, one of the, what were called frackles, not fraggles, um, that puppet did. And that's when the one they ended up using for first season Gonzo. And then um, uh, Dave Goals, who joined the Muppets as a builder, not as a performer. Um, Dave Goals was an industrial and is, I guess, an industrial um, engineer. And so he didn't really like the puppet that it was. And he was like, hey, Jim, can I rebuild this? And Jim was like, yeah, sure, have at it. So he built the Gonzo we now know, uh, and that and Gonzo's iMech is real cool in that it doesn't do much. It 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 can't close all the way. It can only open wider, and then go back to neutral. That's it. That's all it can do. Um, but he makes such good use of it, right? Doesn't overuse it. Only uses it when appropriate. And there's a great story uh, that he tells of one time he was doing like some morning show, like you know breakfast in America or whatever it is um, and during the performance that was going out live Gon one of Gonzo's eyelids broke and so only one eyelid <laughs> was going back and forth and he's like that looks fantastic let's <laughs> let's just keep it so from then on Gonzo has been built with two eyelid mechs so they can be operated independently there's my little Gonzo trivia for it. Uh, yeah, real good though. Um, I'm about to, I just got a commission actually for a Life Hands Monster with an eyelid uh, mech. Uh, I'm gonna be building that week after next. So we might actually, I may be able to show some of that on the stream. Um, but yeah, that's it. Where are we at? We're almost at time here. Woo. Um, let's see, is there any quickie question we can do? Let me see. To close, we did that. Ah, okay, here we go. Here's something we can just. This is a. This is a, like a personal question. This isn't a build question, so we can. This is from Team Smartass on uh, Instagram. Where's the question? But there we go. Will I be making any more tribute, tribute puppets, <laughs> or is Kermit the top choice to build? Um, I would love to make more Muppet replicas. Obviously, not for sale, just for my own collection. Kermit was obviously the top priority. Um, I would be perfectly happy to never build another Muppet replica. Um, if I do get a chance to, that would be cool too. But um, I really just don't have the space. But Kermit is so special that, like, I just I had to do a Kermit, right? It's kind of a puppet builder's rite of passage. You, you got to do your Kermit. And uh, uh, so that's why I really focused on Kermit. I would love to build more. I would love a Gonzo. Gonzo is a really, really tough build. Um, but again, that's like challenging your skills, right? Uh, can you make a good Kermit? Can you make a good Gonzo? Boo, absolutely. I would make every Fraggle, like... Just, you know, yeah, I could, I would love to go nuts with that stuff. I can't, I, don't, I literally don't have the storage space. Um, one of the reasons that like, you know, I'm, I'm not, although I am tempted to keep a lot of the builds that I built for the shop, I don't and I can't because I literally just don't have any place to put them. They get piled up in the office in the front of the apartment <laughs> until they sell. That's the thing, I got a little holding pen for them, but they're just piled up. Um, there's no, there's no, there's no place for them, unfortunately. Uh, you know, if I ever get a big, uh, a big shop or something, you bet there's gonna be a rack of Muppets for sure. 
Uh, yeah, Boober's great. Uh, I mean, they're all, the Fraggles are like, Fraggles are one of my core, you know, favorite designs. The first Finnish puppet I ever made was uh, Fraggle inspired. And that's why, that's where the Greeblies came from. That's why the Greeblies are, are so Fraggly. Um, but yeah, there we go. Thank you for that question as well. You know what? We're going to call it. I'm hungry. Next Lander's doing a stream soon. I don't know what they're playing, but I want to watch that. So i got to figure out what's going on with Twitch for next time. Hopefully. Thank you, everybody. Once again, whirlwind stream, but we got through it all. We did. We got, we cleared. There we, we cleared the agenda. We did it. Uh, how do you feel as a builder about us building in your style? Well, you know, good question. Um, I obviously try and, and make this stuff I build, you know, my own, but it's also very much inspired by early Henson. The Don Salen era or Don Saline era of Henson is my big inspiration. So anybody can take inspiration. I mean, I'm honored if you take inspiration from, from what I build. So I'm not, I'm not worried about it. Don't copy my designs. Obviously that's the only thing I ask is like, if I've put a pattern up for sale, you know, you go down, fill your boots, but, um, th but that's it. Yeah. I've inspired by my style or whatever. Sure. It's cool. Thank you. You know? So yeah, there we go. I'm going to go have lunch. So thank you everybody for showing up yet again. The next stream will be on the 11th, March 11th, um, at 11 AM Eastern. So, Thank you. We're going to hit the end screen. I uh, hope you have a great day. Hope you have a, a good weekend and we will talk to you later.